I'm Nadine Kanar from Year 11. My tet a tet with physics is Solar CD. A solar cell CD experiment. Let's get into it, shall we? You're probably familiar with solar power. Simply explain, generating solar power involves the conversion of light energy from the sun to electrical energy. A perfect example of the law of conservation of energy, which states that energy cannot be created nor destroyed, it can be transformed or converted from one form to another. A solar cell is typically made up of crystalline silicon, a semiconductor, placed between conductive layers. There are two silicon layers, the n-type layer, which has extra electrons and thus is negatively charged, and the p-type layer, which has extra spaces for electrons called holes, and thus is positively charged. These special layers allow electrons to wander across the p-n junction, which they would not be able to do in a normal silicon layer due to the four strong covalent bonds connecting silicon particles, which prevent freely moving electrons. When photons, particles of electromagnetic radiation, strike a solar cell with sufficient energy, it can knock an electron from its bond, leaving a hole. Due to the electric field at the p-n junction, the electron is drawn to the n-side and the hole is drawn to the p-side. At the top of the cell, the mobile electrons are collected through thin metal fingers and then flow through an external circuit to create electricity. In this experiment, instead of creating a conventional solar cell, I'm going to create a solar cell with an object that is found in our day-to-day -day lives, a CD. To create my solar CD, I mainly use the following materials. One, CD. Two, power glue. Three, multimeter. Four, center diodes. Five, copper wire. Six, binder clips. Seven, cutting pliers, eight, soldering iron, and nine, insulated wires. Now, onto the making process. The clips in this part of the video will be sped up and trimmed down to effectively show the process. Firstly, I bend the copper wire, creating arcs or petal-like shapes, which will be used to cover the CD. In order to make the wire arcs even, I use tools like needle nose pliers. After bending the wire in around 7 arcs, up and down, I cut the piece of wire using the cutting pliers. I made 4 pieces of wires, 2 with 7 arcs, 1 with 1 arc, and another one with 2 arcs, just enough to cover the CD. Secondly, I glued the wire pieces to the CD with power glue carefully. To not spend too much time waiting for the glue to dry, I used the binder clips to hold the wires in place as the glue dries. I also left a gap between each piece of wire for the zener diodes. Thirdly, using the soldering iron, I soldered three zener diodes to the wires between the gaps of each wire piece, leaving the fourth gap. Fourthly, I soldered each of the two insulated wires to each of the sides of the copper wires that were left as a fourth gap. After making my solar CD, I went outside to test it with my multimeter. But, how did it work? The shell
shiny, reflective side of the CD is first used as base. A Zener diode is a silicon semiconductor device with a PN junction, similar to a photovoltaic or conventional solar cell. However, its PN junction is special as it is designed to conduct electricity in the reverse direction when a certain voltage is reached. When the photons from sunlight strike the Zener diodes, energy is transferred to the electrons in the Zener diodes, causing them to jump to a higher energy state called the conduction band, which allows the electrons in the Zener diodes to get knocked out and creates holes. Due to the electric field caused by the PN junction, electrons move to the opposite direction than expected, toward the negatively charged N side, while the holes move toward the positively charged P side. This creates an electric current in the center diodes. The electric current created is conducted by the copper wire. Copper is chosen specifically for this experiment's wire due to being one of the best and most commonly used metals to conduct electricity. The copper wire conducts the electric current unless it flows through the connected insulated wires. Connecting the insulated wires to the multimeter, we will observe that it does produce voltage. This proves that this experiment is successful. That concludes my Tet a Tet with Physics, Solar CD. Thank you for watching!